Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 27, in which we'll be looking at chapter 29, Return and Departure. As this is the last chapter of part two, I will also be reviewing that section. My apologies for the delay in releasing this episode. This is due to what I will describe as a family crisis. When you're in your mid-50s, as I am, your parents tend to be of a certain age. I'll say no more other than to say it wasn't a bereavement. One bit of borough keeping. I have added the musical interludes to episodes 1 to 7 as I didn't start using them until episode 8. None of the pre-existing content has been altered and I have not split pre-existing tracks. Also, these episodes will stay as they were on YouTube. I'm also, also not sure how long this will take to feed through to podcast providers. There just seemed to be something missing from those episodes. Chapter 29. Return and Departure. The opening quotation is among, among the more obvious in the book, as Shakespeare's Henry V guilt trips his troops into fighting alongside him by saying that any cowards who abandon the fight will be treated kindly, as he would not want to die alongside them. This is very much Hazel's style of leadership. The chapter opens with the eagerly anticipated return of Hazel to the down. Blackbury has had to repeat the story of the finding of Hazel several times, and there have been rumours that it was actually Kiha who found him. Interestingly, Kiha has responded to these by commenting that Fiverr has travelled a great deal further than he has. It's odd that some of Kiha's wiser, wiser words are only reported to the reader rather than quoted in his strong accent. Is this to give them more gravitas? It would have been interesting to see how Kiha phrased this. Hazel has taken on an almost magical quality, with the story of his dash to save his friends in the ditch being elaborated by Dandelion. There is no mention that perhaps the raid was a little foolhardy. Besides, as things stand, it has brought the only does they have to Watership Down. Just after sunrise, Fiverr arrives on the down first, greeted by Pipkin and Speedwell, followed by a limping Hazel, who has still found the climb very difficult. After a rest, he is able to run the rest of the way with the others, where he is greeted back at the Warren with play fighting. He thinks to himself that this is almost a test of his leadership and accepts that it is necessary. He then has a conversation with Boxwood about how he is settling in the first he has been able to have with the Hutch Rabbit since their arrival on the down. Boxwood's main challenge seems to be learning how to live by smell, having been used to the overwhelming smellscape of a farm. Hazel also talks to Strawberry, who was with Boxwood, and asks how he is doing. Strawberry has been very badly affected by his experience in, in Ephrafa, and says he would rather die than go back there. He makes the interesting comment that it was difficult to know what was worse there, the boredom or the fear. An interesting comment on the oppressive dourness of totalitarian regimes. But Strawberry also says that there are many rabbits in Ephrafa who would want to leave so they could lead a life more like that on Watership Down. Is Strawberry possibly suffering from PTSD? It would be understandable. And Adams would have knowledge of such reactions to traumatic experiences from his army days in World War II. Hazel, like a true leader, makes sure he talks to all the rabbits before going underground. They are outraged at the treatment the expedition received at Ephrafa, and worried that there are still only two does in the Warren, which could lead to trouble. Later, Hazel calls a meeting in the Honeycomb, where he makes clear his intention to get more does from Ephrafa. This is greeted with astonishment. When Bluebell asks how they are going to do this, Hazel explains that he and Blackberry have a plan, but they're not going to explain it in case anyone is caught and taken to Ephrafa. It will be explained at the appropriate time. This is obviously sensible, though it does potentially expose the group to the risk of being tortured in Ephrafa. Such are the hard decisions of leadership. Although Hazel hopes to avoid fighting, he is going to take enough rabbits to deal with any wide patrols they may meet. He confirms that they will not be going into Ephrafa. Holly interrupts and gives a comprehensive speech, criticising Hazel's plan based on his experiences of Ephrafa. His tone is firm but respectful though he does not refer to Hazel as Ra on this occasion. This causes a buzz of conversation in the honeycomb, and Hazel waits patiently for this to stop. He then reminds them of the reality that they do not have enough does, and they have this one chance to put this right for good. His response is directed to the group, and not to Holly, which seems appropriate. Significantly, someone asks what Fiverr thinks. He says that he is going, and that Hazel is right but if he gets any feelings that things aren't right, he will speak up. 
Hazel promises that he will not ignore such warnings. Bigwid then speaks, saying that he is going, and they will have Kihar with them. Hazel says that the Hutch Rabbits and anyone who went before is not expected to come, though Silver says he will, a mark of his character, though he cannot face going back into Afrafa. Little Pipkin, in a confused speech, confirms he is going. So now the strongest and the weakest have confirmed they are going. No one else has any excuse. Henry V indeed. Blackberry, who Hazel thought was already in the meeting, then arrives to say, after a very formally phrased acknowledgement of Hazel, that he has been talking to Kihar, who has improved the plan considerably. By the time they are done, General Woundwort is going to look very silly. He wasn't sure that it could be done at all, but now he is. Bluebell pipes up with his usual joking turn of phrase, but his reference to Bigwig being involved in the plan seems to annoy Hazel, who tells him to shut up. As we learn later, Bluebell has indeed accidentally guessed part of the plan, which must have alarmed Hazel. After Bluebell apologises, saying that he was only trying to cheer everyone up because this plan sounds very frightening, Hazel confirms that no one has to go if they do not want to. This is his Henry V moment. Hazel then goes to speak with Kihar, who has found himself a piece of rotting fish down at the farm, which is stinking out the down. This half-eaten kipper has reminded him of the Pig Vata, the sea, which he now wants to return to all the time. He says he will help them to get the mudders out of Ephrafa, but he will then want to leave them to return to his natural habitat, though he will return in the autumn or winter. Hazel says that when he does return, it will be to a fine warren that he will have helped to create. Kihar, Kihar asks that the plan be carried out quickly. Bigwig appears, and after he has reacted to the kipper with appropriate disgust, Hazel confirms that they will set off at daybreak. Holly will be chief rabbit until they return, and the farm rabbits, as well as Buckthorn and Strawberry, will remain with him on Watership Down. Anyone else who wants to can also stay. Bigwig says he will send them all up to Silflay with Kihar, implying they will go anywhere else after that. So ends part two of Watership Down, which began with the rabbit's arrival at the foot of the down and ends with most of them leaving a well-established warren on an expedition to ensure it has a future. Three more rabbits, two of them does, have joined them from Nuthanger Farm, but this has nearly resulted in the chief rabbit losing his life. We are well past the halfway point of the story, the rest of which is very much focused on Ephrafa. Some frightening times lie ahead. As ever, thank you to John Ruths for his notes. At the end of part one of the book, I paused going through it for a couple of episodes and I now plan to do so again. My plans are kind of up in the air at the moment, so I'm open to any ideas about the kind of content you would like to hear in the next two episodes. In any case, see you next week. Mm -hmm.